with State Senator Tim Bivens. He's on the line right now. Tim, good morning to you. Good morning. How's everything going this morning? Good. You caught me just running up the Capitol steps. <laughs> wow, you're like you're you're like Rocky. When you get to the top, you raise your hands above the uh, above your head and dance around a little bit. Uh, no, they go to my knees. I guess for air. Ah, that's the same way I do it. Uh, when we're in DC. We're all in the yeah, same boat. Then. Absolutely. Couple things to hit with you uh, this morning, uh, Senator Bivens. Uh, right at the top, though, a little bit of news from last night uh, from the, the transportation or the transportation issue. Uh, John Cabello telling uh, our news partners at Eyewitness News, and it's uh, everywhere this morning. It's not unexpected that the the money for Rockford, Chicago, Amtrak is just simply not there. Uh, this is a, a situation. Unfortunately, our former governor Pat Quinn basically came here. Lied to everybody, said there was money when there was no money, when the money was not appropriated, and promised Amtrak service this year, and it's simply not going to happen. It's a, it's a, it's an unfortunate situation above almost anything else. Well, yeah, what, isn't that uh, Yogi Berra's uh, deja vu all over again? Mm -hmm. Four years ago, and uh, <laughs> you know, hey, we're going to have Amtrak, and then four years goes by, election time, which he did the same thing with with our tax dollars. You know, every every election, it's. Uh, I think last year he, he doled out about $3 million in grants, and, and this year, prior to election, he doled out about $113 million in grants. And, Senator, with the, with the Amtrak proposal, it's not dead forever, certainly, but the, 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 this budget year doesn't look like it's going to happen. Does this give people an opportunity to perhaps uh, fine-tune that proposal even more uh, and get it to a, to a place where uh, it's even more con overly convincing, I guess, uh, that, that it's the right thing to do the next time around? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, I think it all boils down to ridership. I mean, it's it's uh, certainly it's subsidized transportation, but when you look at transportation, what isn't? I think the airline industry, everything, our roads, everything subsidized our transportation to move people around the the country. But uh, yeah, I mean, the reality is, in in reality, has finally hit the capital. It's finally hit Illinois that uh, we're broke. There is no money, and you have a governor that has come in who is very serious. Was doing what he said he would do, and uh, it, it's you know he's been here two months, and it's, it's interesting. It's it's almost like the the blame Bush mantra uh, that he's taking a lot of heat, which he said he says I don't care. He says we got to fix this uh, no, no matter what it takes. But you know he didn't create that. I keep pointing that out to people. I said he walked into a 1.6 billion dollar hole in this year's budget, that this existing budget, and we haven't even got to next year's budget. And so that's what they're dealing with, and, and uh, we'll be voting on uh, later today. Got a quote from our own uh, Joe Sosnowski, who says, The availability of funds for this project falsely advertised no money designated for the project, an outrageous political lie by the prior administration. Yeah, that falls right into your deja vu all over again theory. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's just a, a model they use over and over again to say anything to get elected. And, you know, it's... Again, reality struck home. I think people are, our eyes are finally wide open. But, you know, we've been warning about this day for years. Uh, we said that the money's not there. It's, it's, this is not sustainable. You can't keep, keep spending more than you're taking in. And, and we're there. And, and, uh, and, and thank heavens that we have a new sheriff in town that uh, is uh, willing to take this on. And I tell you that the atmosphere down here is entirely different. State Senator Tim Bivens with us here. It's Ronnie and Scott on WROK. Let's talk about that vote happening today, Tim. Uh, uh, the short-term budget fix for the current fiscal year for 2015, it's already passed through the House. Now, Senate President John Cullerton previously had said, hey, no deal on this year unless he receives some guarantees about tax hikes for the 2016 budget year. Do you think this vote today will go, will be approved? Will we have this budget fix in place by the end of the day? I think we will. I mean, you know, this is Springfield, so you never know. But uh, I think it's going to happen. I, you know, it's uh, it canceled uh, tomorrow. We we're supposed to be in session tomorrow, so you know, history tells me that uh, when, whenever a big vote comes, uh, it's it's the hit and run theory. You know, you you, you pass the big vote and then leave town. So uh, that that's what's happening today. So I I, I think the votes are there. I think it's going to pass. Uh, you know, it it uh, it's going to be you know a tough pill to swallow, but. Uh, He's looking at life safety issues, and, you know, unfortunately, every, every agency you talk to, every every provider you talk to talks about children, talks about the impact, and, uh, but, you know, there's just, there is no money, and there's there's very limited resources uh, to, to delve into, and you've got, 
you know, 500 some special funds in the state. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're tapping into a lot of that, and uh, you know, it's about the only place to go right now. Uh, it, it's not not desirable, but it's you know, it's like I've been telling a lot of mayors who, who complain about going forward next year's budget and the governor's proposal on cutting uh, state funding to municipalities. It, you know, I said, well, that's a maybe a six percent cut to our to our budget. I said, better a six percent cut today than a hundred percent tomorrow, because if we don't fix this today, that's what's going to happen tomorrow down the road. There will be no money. There will there will be zero. Uh, and I, I think every year you hear this uh, that these big threats, and then it never materializes. But I think people realize not only is this governor serious, but I think they're, they're they've got the got the message that uh, there just is no money, and there's there's no tomorrow. Uh, if we don't get this fixed right now. State Senator Tim Bivens with us. It's Riley and Scott. Is, is this deal, this, this short-term 2015 budget uh, budget hole repair, uh, the first big win for the governor? A lot of people, uh, well, some media members had said, well, Bruce Rotter, he's a rookie governor. He doesn't know what he's doing. He won't be able to work with Mike Madigan. He's been way over his head. Governing is different than campaigning and Government is different than the business world, and you have this 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 plan now, which again looks like it's going to be approved by the Senate today. That he worked with with Mike Madigan, he got the governor got most of what he wanted. Didn't have to agree to any kind of tax hikes to do it. Is this the first big win for the governor in Springfield? Oh, no question about it. I mean, it, this is uh, <clears throat> you know he, he's used. I will say he's a neophyte as it comes as it comes to uh, the process and, and dealing with Springfield. I, mean, I don't think he's used to that uh, coming from a business background, but he's, he can use those set of skills down here very effectively. And as he learns uh, more about the process and, and uh, legislation, uh, he, he's uh, he's jumped right in. It's you know his only. I think he, he's uh, a little frustrated. It took as long as it did. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, the guy's only been here two months. <laughs> it's a little over two months, and, and uh, he's accomplished this already. So I think it's a huge win. You know, I I've, I mentioned this in the past, but in the primary. I did not support this candidate, but uh, certainly after the primary, I did. Uh, and I, I got to say, I, I am very impressed with uh, the, the direction he's taken. He would live in Springfield, and guess what? He's doing it. I, I'm, 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 everybody's just astonished by that in, in itself. <laughs> I saw Rob Lugovich once uh, when I was when I came down to the Senate. I saw Pat Quinn a handful of times in Springfield. Uh, matter of fact, we on uh, Thursday mornings. I'm getting ready to do in a little while. We have a meeting, 7:30. We used the governor's conference room because uh, there was nobody there, and we asked this governor, "Can we use the conference room?" Or his staff, "Can we use the conference room Thursday mornings at 7:30?" And they said, "Gee, we're really sorry. You you, you can't do that because the governor's in it. Then his office, we can't go in there." <laughs> Well, that's totally seems, different atmosphere. I was going to say a pleasant enough rejection. Wow, he's in there doing stuff. Well, okay, then we don't mind moving it somewhere else. Yeah, he's, I mean he's. He went to the local barber shop down here. He went to a high school basketball game. He goes to the restaurants down here. I saw it wasn't him because I know where he was at the time. But he had his dogs were being walked uh, about uh, two blocks down from the Capitol, and, and uh, so I mean he, he's uh, he's taking. You know, laid down roots down here. <laughs> State Senator Tim Bivens with us another minute or two. It's Riley and Scott on WROK. Why don't I get to this uh, Citispace story, too? We've talked about it the past few days. Governor Quinn, after losing the election, approving a $10 million grant for a Chicago film company to buy property, which wasn't for sale, that the state hadn't appraised to find out how much it should be worth. Uh, they weren't in negotiations to buy the property. They weren't in compliance with previous grants that were handed out to Citispace. They had the ability to substitute properties according to the grant. They still haven't spent the money, so it's $10 million taxpayer dollars that could be used to pay bills or just earn interest, I suppose, for Illinois taxpayers. Instead, Citispace has it. Governor Rutter says, you got to give that back. You've called for an investigation of the whole thing. What do you think's going on here? Well, I I read the the, uh, the account on Saturday. I blew a gasket immediately uh, upon reading that and uh, got on the phone and, and talked to uh, governor's staff. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, once again, props to the governor. He, he uh, the next day, he was demanding, give our money back. And, you know, I don't think the checks, uh, you know, maybe the checks in the mail, but they said they're giving the money back that they hadn't spent it yet. I mean, what, what a refreshing uh, uh, outcome. <laughs> you know, this, this is, um, you have the prior governor giving away $100 million to the NRI 
neighborhood recovery initiative prior to the election is still under investigation, and he stonewalls on that. Uh, but here, this this governor goes right after it and gets it. And okay, okay, we'll send it back. But yeah, it's amazing that you know while they were they were 1.3 million dollar uh, construction grant uh, was uh, suspended by the state. At the same time, he got the, you know this this uh, company got another 16 million dollars. And just it's just remarkable. Uh, but it's it's the it's the uh, the model that I've talked about in the past. It's what they do. They go after grants and and. Uh, get this money, and then it goes, and, and then there's investigations later. But this isn't over yet. As I've said this in the past, by the way, this is not over. Uh, I've asked for the Auditor General. Well, I want to know where all our money went to this company, what they did with it. Uh, I've asked the Attorney General to look into it, and uh, this isn't over by a long shot. So uh, uh, we'll keep looking at this and, and try to figure out where our money back and hopefully recover even more. Outstanding. Well, we appreciate the effort on that. We also appreciate, as always, you taking time out of your morning for us. You bet. Anytime.